This video will explain most of the basic commands you can use in Vocola 3. Note that a lot of games won't accept Windows Speech Recognition's inputs, and a number of those that do will not accept Vocola 3's inputs. This can sometimes be mitigated by running one or both of them as an administrator, and by writing code which activates auto hotkey scripts. One general tip before starting. Windows Speech Recognition brings up a little message box when you try to type into non-Microsoft applications, called the Dictation Scratchpad. Before gaming, you should disable it by right-clicking on the Speech Recognition icon in the taskbar, going to Options, and unchecking the box. This lets you send text and Vocola 3 commands to non-Microsoft programs, allowing you to do a bit more than you could before. Here I've got a set of commands for demonstrating some Vocola 3 code, though I've chosen some slightly odd number ranges to avoid it having two actions to do for the same command. Vocola 3 commands involve listing one or more possible inputs, then an equal sign, then one or more actions separated by spaces, and then a semicolon. If you don't end an expression with a semicolon, Vocola will throw up an error. The list of actions is interpreted term by term like computer code. And if you like, you can separate your actions with new lines, including leaving blank lines, so long as you end it with a semicolon. The simplest custom command is one that takes in a specific word or sequence of words and outputs a specific word, sequence of words, or key press. However, Vocola ignores spaces, so if you have multiple words you want to output, you need to surround them with quotes. Test command. Space. Second test command. Space. Third test command. Cursor keys need to be put in curly brackets. For them to be pressed repeatedly, you can put an underscore, then the relevant number, which is a neat expression. Left. Left two. Left two. Vocola can take varied inputs. Ranges of numbers are called number ranges, described by having the lowest number, then two dots, then the highest number. Multiple word options are called alternative words, encoded as a list of words separated by vertical bars and enclosed in brackets. Varied inputs are generally called variable terms. The first variable term it receives is referred to on the right-hand side as $1. The second variable term it receives is referred to on the right-hand side as $2, and so on. Here you can see after the word left it takes a number range, and the received number is put after the underscore in the curly brackets to determine how many times to press left. Note that having left on both sides of this is just by choice. I could have had it be enter or space or whatever I liked. The key thing is that number ranges can give you a range of outputs. Left 3 left 10, left 63. In this command, having cursor key directions as the alternative words means that the first variable term is one of those words, and can go inside the curly brackets to refer to pressing the appropriate cursor key. Here I've then put an underscore and then a number, although it didn't actually have to match the one over here. This can be done the other way around. Having 29 in front of the alternative words doesn't change that the first variable term only refers to the words, so I can still use $1 and then underscore and then 29 if I chose. Down 23. Up 23. Right 23. Knowing this, we can take both directions and numbers as our inputs in the same command, and produce this simple yet elegant expression for pressing those directions that number of times. Note the ordering of the variable terms, because what's in the curly bracket has to be of the form key number. You make sure to put the one that refers to alternative words first, and the one that refers to the numbers second. Also note that the key pressing time is very brief, and there is a way to make it longer which I'll mention in a moment. I should admit that having numbers this high doesn't appear to be effective, in that Windows speech recognition seems keener to send just the word and then the number you sent, instead of following this command. 
but it behaves properly for numbers from 1 to 20 and behaves a little bit for numbers between 21 and 25. In Vocola 3 you can define variables, not in the normal sense, but these are predefined lists of alternative words or a number range, with the variable name enclosed in angle brackets. They are not the same as variable terms. One way to remember this is that variables go on the left-hand side of the equal sign, and references to variable terms go on the right-hand side. Vocola 3's variables save you from having to repeatedly write out the same word or number options several times. When you have the same variable multiple times in your input expression, the variable terms are still interpreted in the same left-to-right order in which they came in. Note that you don't have to use all the available variable terms or variables in your input expression. You can randomly repeat some, you can throw others away, whatever you like. Note that the number range 1 to 9 is technically shorthand for the digits 1 to 9 interpreted as alternative words. Left. Up. Down. Right. Up, down, left, right. Up, right, down, up. Up, right, down. Left, left, up. When you need to comment your code, you put a hash sign at the start of that line. Vocola 3 doesn't have standard loops, nor a useful if command, but you can repeat commands with its repeat function, which takes a whole number for its first input, and its second input is the code to be repeated, which can be one or several commands. You can introduce pauses using the wait function, which counts in milliseconds. This works well when combined with the repeat function, when Vocola's sequential key presses are timed too closely together for your program to process them all. Having a controllable wait time between each input means you can increase it until your program processes them all. Wait is also useful when combined with the key modifiers underscore hold and underscore release, which are for holding down or releasing given keys. This can be useful if the default key press times are too short to be received, allowing you to set your own. Note that if you want to hold down letters from the alphabet, you need to have them capitalized inside the curly brackets. Left 7, right 8, right 15, up 17. Notice how, because of the wait 50 involved in these commands, it takes longer for the inputs to go through and move the selected cell around Excel. Left 10, left 11. Holding down A. Vocola doesn't process number values like most programming languages. Here you can't add or multiply integer values the normal way. However, it is quite relaxed about number inputs, allowing you to place variable terms that refer to number ranges and predefined numbers together, sometimes separated by spaces, and it will squish them together into one concatenated number before processing them. It's kind of like if it had typed the digits into the calculator, having some which it knows and some which your command gives it. This command will hold down down for 100 times the value I said in milliseconds, because I give it a number from 1 to 10, and then it puts two zeros on the end. Remember that spaces are ignored when it processes things. This command takes my number, waits for that number of milliseconds, but repeats that action 100 times, producing the same outcome. Any numerical variable term can be easily multiplied up by powers of 10 by putting a couple of zeros after the value, which is neater and quicker than using the repeat function. But if you needed to multiply by any other number, you'd have to use repeat. But you do need to be careful to avoid unexpected jumps in values. Here I'm taking in numbers from 1 to 10, and the wait period is 1, 0, and then the number I put in. So as I go 1, 2, 3, and so on up to 10, it goes 101, 102, all the way up to 109, but when it comes to the 10, this then becomes 1010. So I've jumped from 109 milliseconds to 1010 milliseconds. Left and right clicks and all non-standard keys each have a particular expression to put in curly brackets for activating them. There is a particular page for this on the Vocola website, which I've linked to in the description. To combine multiple keys, inside the curly brackets you use a plus sign. Note that this underscore 3 refers to the entire combination, not just the last button. Optional words are put in square brackets, which can save you having to make duplicate commands. 
although you can only have one optional word or expression for each command. If you need to have multiple optional words for the same command, you'll need to duplicate the command and then change the optional word or phrase in each one. Mouse away. Move mouse away. Shove mouse away. Get rid of mouse away. The mouse can be moved with the move by command, which takes coordinates for relative motion. Here there is a cunning trick where it converts one direction to a negative sign and another to a positive sign whilst on the left hand sign of the main equal sign. So regardless of what I say over here, if I say left, then I've created a minus, and if I say right, I've created a plus. In this expression, there are only two variable terms. The first one is this number, and then the second one initially takes in left or right, but then converts left to a minus sign and right to a plus sign before the equal sign. Therefore, the second variable term will always be a plus or a minus. Then over here, you've got $2, meaning the plus or minus, followed by $1, meaning the number from the number range. Putting the sign variable term in front of the number variable term makes a valid input for this command, remembering that it treats numbers like it types them into a calculator, and this means that combined with the repeat function, you can create grid movement for the cursor. I then reverse the arrangement, saying left or right before 1 to 99 here, and doing the same for moving the mouse up and down. I chose to use repeat and then the number 30 so that this would move on a grid resolution of 30 pixels. Technically, I could have put one or two zeros after the dollar signs to multiply their value by 10 or 100. But as said before, if I want to multiply by anything that's not a power of 10, I need to use repeat. So it's easier to make the repeat function the first time around so that you can easily make changes. Mouse down 20. Mouse right 12. Mouse left 20. Mouse down 2. Mouse right 99. Vocola can execute programs by following a directory link, including auto-hotkey files. This is done with the function run program open bracket begin quote, and then the full folder path to the program or file in question. This is most useful for when Vocola 3's click isn't recognized, but clicks sent by auto-hotkey would be. There are a few more commands for manipulating the mouse, a few more about window control, some about manipulating strings, and a bit more though there is definitely no way to move the mouse continuously. The more advanced commands are found in these function libraries, but sticking to the commands I've mentioned will give you a fair range of reliable inputs for cursor keys and mouse movement. However, you still can't set and manipulate your own normal style variables, so within these restrictions you may not always be able to do what you'd like to do. Overall, this is a free and easy to learn custom command program for basic actions. And because you can run both Windows Speech Recognition and Vocola 3 in administrator mode, you can enable them to act on many applications, including using these voice commands to help with making profiles in Voice Attack and VoiceBot. There is also Vocola 2, which allows you to modify inputs from Dragon Actually Speaking, and I'll be demonstrating that sometime later after I've properly researched it.